Welcome back to another Bali COVID-19 update for July 29th, 2020. And uh, this is my No Name channel, and I'm Bruce Pullman. And, well, it's getting a little exciting, so let's take a look and see what's going on today. First, numbers as usual, <clears throat> 30 cases, 30 new cases. Yesterday, all local. Um, as usual, the uh, the numbers are 3,249 total positives, 2,627 recovered. It's gone up. Deaths have stayed stable at 48. Thank goodness. And there's 574 positive uh, active cases, uh, and so that's down again. So more good news and. The number one uh, spot yesterday for cases was in Guyanair, uh, followed by Dempasar, and then Bangli and Kum Kum. So we're still getting cases, and why is that important? Because today is July 29th, and in two days, July 31st, Bali will officially open for tourists. What kind of tourists? Domestic tourists. Not international, this is, this is domestic. And yesterday, um, the governor outlined the protocols for new tourists coming in, and there's a list of them. So I'm going to read them off because no way I can remember these. Uh, so, number one um, is so. These are these are regulations are all here to um, to protect the safety of the Balinese, the safety of the Indonesians that are living here, as well as the tourists coming in, uh, to provide um, uh, an environment that is enjoyable, comfortable, and safe. And what are they? Number one. Okay, there's a lot. There are 12, and a lot of little points for number nine. Number one, you have to have a test that shows that you're free of COVID-19 before you arrive. The test can be result of a swab test or a, a rapid test. Results have to be good for 14 days from the um, issue of the certificate that shows that you're virus-free. Okay. Um, so that's 14 days. If you do not have one, um, you will be required to get one. Now, if you have one, if you have one already, you've got a certificate, you get here, you're not going to be required to be tested again here unless you're showing symptoms. Um, and so that's good. Uh, that's a little different than what's happening in some places and what was planned to happen here originally. Um, you've got a certificate, you're clear to go. Okay, um, if you don't, if you show up here, and I'm not sure why that would happen. Um, from what I understand, people are having to show that they have the test already to get on the plane. Uh, but let's say that they get here and they don't have the, the required certificate. They're going to need to take a test here, either the swab test or the rapid test. Um, and... Uh, Tourists with a reactive um, rapid test. So, if you get positive for the rapid test, you are going to need to take a swab test. And you will need to um, be quarantined at a place by the government, determined by the government, uh, until the results of the swab test come back. And I'll get to the little tricky part of that, that in a minute. Um, and Tourists that are positive for the swab test are going to be taken to a government facility, again, a health facility, where they will be treated. Um, so you're not going to be put back in the plane and sent off. You're going to be taken somewhere to a health facility in Bali and treated. The cost for the quarantine, the test, and the health facility will be the responsibility of the tourist. 
So, if you show up here and you don't have the test, you're going to have to be tested. You're going to have to pay for that. Okay. If you test positive for the rapid test, then you have to have the swab test. You've got to pay for that, right? And while you're waiting, you're going to be quarantined. You have to pay for that. And if that unfortunately turns out positive, you're going to be sent to a health facility, um, I suppose a hospital, and you're going to have to pay for that as well. So this could become very costly uh, if you are not prepared beforehand. So if you're planning on coming, make sure that you have your certificate in hand. Um, and before you, uh, before you come to Bali, you're going to have to fill in the Love Bali app. And the Love Bali app is available online. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, there's a link down below to this. All right. It's Love Bali, all caps. And you need to fill that out. Um, and tourist accommodations are going to be required to make sure that you fill that out when they get there. So you get to a hotel, they should be asking you that you fill this out. Uh, now, I haven't actually seen this app yet, um, but there's a link below. Okay, and those are the first eight. Number nine, tourists are obliged to implement the new era of Bali life order protocols with these provisions. Now, listen carefully to the provisions. Use a mask or a face shield. Wash your hands with soap and water or use a hand sanitizer. Maintain social distance of one meter. Now, I've already seen a couple of, of problems here. We'll get back to the problems at the end. Uh, implement clean and healthy behavior. Um, cover your nose and mouth with tissue uh, or handkerchief when you sneeze or cough. Avoid touching your face, your nose, your eyes, um, your mouth. Uh, undergo body temperature checks um, wherever you go. Um, for me here in Singaraja, there have been uh, there are a number of stores that, that do a check when you come in, and all government offices do. Uh, so uh, this is painless, right? They just do that, um, and you're done. Uh, clean your personal items as necessary, such as mobile phones, glasses, bags, masks, um, and other items with a disinfectant liquid uh, as needed. Be willing to be examined by health authorities um, in the uh, framework of preventing the spread of COVID-19. So I'm not sure exactly what that means. Um, maybe that means if if somebody suspects you of being sick, you're in a the hotel lobby and you're coughing, um, somebody may show up to check you out. Um, avoid physical contact when greeting. So, no hugging, no hugging, no handshakes. And um, when in Bali, activate your GPS so that you're able to be tracked if there is a problem. And tourists are required to comply with all these provisions uh, and if they're found not to be complying with government regulations, they will be sanctioned. Uh, sanction was not mentioned, the type of sanction, uh, so that remains to be seen. And uh, finally, uh, tourists that have complaints can make a complaint on their Love Bali app. Uh, okay, so domestic tourism, two days and counting, and let's see what happens. Uh, a lot of places are open already, a lot of sites are prepared to go. Uh, like I said in the video the other day, um, well, in Pamutran things were closed up. Not sure how that's going to be um, here. In Lovina, um, things look ready to go. They've been open for quite a while. Some restaurants have been open, well, long before they should have been. Um, but Lovina is set to go, and I assume that places in around the island are going to be uh, ready. Uh, are we going to get a deluge of tourists coming in on the 31st? 
I don't know. Let's see what happens. Okay. Now, international travel, right? The other day I said it looked like September 11th, and the governor said yesterday, whoa, whoa, whoa everybody just chill for a minute. Uh, we do want to open on September 11th to international tourism, but that's not possible as long as the national, the national rules take precedent. The national rule is nobody is allowed to come in. Uh, and so that's going to need to be changed from Jakarta first. And the governor, uh, according to the article down below, um, has asked that that regulation be uh, scrapped to allow for people to come back to the island. Uh, my guess is that Jokowi is going to go okay. With, is going to be okay with that um, because he wants to get going. He's wanted to get going for a while, and so. Yeah, cautious optimism uh, if you're an international tourist. Cautious optimism. Now, right now, the cases nationally, we're up over 100,000. Um, we're still getting over 1,000 new cases a day, 14, 15, 16, 1,700 a day. Uh, and I was talking to some, some foreign friends around Asia because these are, these are the places where we get our tourists from, right? Our international tourists. They said, why would I want to go to a country that has more cases than I do, than my country does? Um, doesn't make sense. I can stay home. So, uh, and some countries aren't allowing people to leave, to travel, uh, like Australia, which is a big part of our uh, international tourist uh, base. So, even if Bali does open on September 11th, are people going to come? Uh, I don't know. We'll see. So, that's the update. If you're a domestic tourist, good news for you. Uh, you can show up in two more days. Today is Wednesday, so Thursday, Friday. Friday is the, the day that things will open. Uh, okay, so how about something non-COVID related? Um, okay. Um, Bali police bust international fugitive turn porn star. I love this story. Okay, so there's an American guy from Chicago, from my old area, um, and he's wanted uh, in, on an Interpol list, um, according to the news article, um, for <laughs> scamming people out of $500,000 investment scam, took the money to invest used it for his um, personal enjoyment uh, and when people tried to uh, get their money back uh, he didn't repay it and uh, he was arrested uh, apparently and escaped and ended up in Bali. He's been in Bali since January hiding out and with no uh, way to support himself he and his girlfriend who um, I guess arrived with him uh, didn't say but he and his girlfriend have been making home videos of their sexual activities and uploading them and selling them online to support themselves. And so he's been busted by the police and they confiscated, uh, this is interesting, uh, what they confiscated because they listed everything, they confiscated passport, a folding knife, five mobile phones, five mobile phones, 14 sex toys, and 13 other electronic devices. And they are going to be, well, he is going to be, it didn't say what's happening to the female. Um, the male is going to be sent back to the US even though there's no extradition treaty between Indonesia and um, the US. He will be sent back. Um, because the Indonesian police in this article said, well, he hasn't done anything illegal here, so uh, we're going to send him to the U.S. where he's wanted. <clears throat> but if he's making sex videos um, and it gets out, that's illegal. Um, right? You remember, well, I wasn't doing uh, news updates back then, but um, there have been a number of people put in jail for having sex videos, uh, even though they weren't selling them. Uh, it was Rockstar, what was his name? I forget. Um, he did some time. He didn't put it up, but somebody else did. 
Uh, and so, yeah, that's the, the governmental intrusion into what you do in your bedroom. Uh, so, it seems to me that he did commit uh, some crimes, uh, and also the, the electronic um, internet uh, bill. But, regardless, um, okay, so, uh, interesting case. And, um, one more, um, one more crime case for today. A Russian couple uh, have been deported or are in the process of being deported. And so what did this Russian couple do? Well, they were uh, offering yoga classes in violation of their visa and someone turned them in. And so there's a picture of them sitting there not looking very happy, uh, and they're being well. They say they can't they can't go home because they don't have enough money, and so immigration is in contact with the Russian embassy to uh, see what, how to take care of resolve this issue. A lot of people here doing yoga classes and things like that illegally, apparently. Uh, and if you advertise on the internet, and apparently that was one of the things I did, you may be turned in. Uh, if if you were operating a business that's in conflict, that's competing with um, a local business, and they find out, you can expect to be dobbed into immigration. Uh, that's going to happen. So, if you're here, try to stick within the uh, the law. And so, uh, that's it. Oh, one final thought on this. So, there's a, this list of regulations for the domestic tourist, and one of them is face mask, and another one is social distancing. The face mask issue is is still not being. Enforced here, uh, particularly among um, tourists, a lot of tourists still not wearing face masks, uh, but also local some. Like I said before, in Singaraja, if you go to downtown Singaraja and even on the roads, almost everybody. But uh, I've heard that in other areas there are less, there's less compliance with the law, and so how is that going to work? Mm remains to be seen. So, let's see what happens uh, if you're a domestic tourist and you're planning on coming to Bali. Remember to follow the regulations and uh, enjoy yourself. So, that's it for today. I just wanted to, to do a quick uh, video before the island actually opens up for business on Friday. And be safe, follow regulations, and be kind to someone today and see you next time. Thanks and bye.